Okay, you're all set. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the open meeting of the Design Review Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, the town of Northborough has been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a public, publicly accessible physical location. All members of the design review committee are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows the design review committee to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberation of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to Northborough Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link listed on the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not have, will this meeting will not feature public comments. So now I'm gonna move forward in confirming members access. Um, when I call out your name, if you can just affirm that you're attending the meeting. Dave Veron. Yep. Tom Reardon. Here. Diane Nicholas. Here. Lisa Maselli. Lisa Maselli. Here. Okay. All right, and so we're, we're meeting today to discuss 50 Southwest cutoff. Our applicant is here before us. Um, and, um, you know, we'll decide at the end of the meeting if we're all ready to move on to uh, completing the design review committee um, and sending the applicant on to the ZBA. So we left off last week with a landscape plan and we left off with, I, we got two messages from Kathy about this. And then let's just, um, before we start the meeting, I just wanted to let you know that Lisa, you had sent me a, an email with regards to this applicant. I couldn't respond to it because it would have been in violation of the open meeting law. But today we'll go through this and we'll go back each step along the way from the signage to lighting. And if you, you have any comments, please share with the applicant or the committee so that we can all um, with consensus, whether we agree or not, at least know that everyone's voice was heard. And then you can at least, um, when the ZBA wants to read our decision, they can understand. Unless of course, Lisa, do you wanna, do you wanna read off the letter you sent to me or are you, um, no, are you okay I'm, with it? I'm okay, okay. with what you wanna do. Okay, so I know that you had concerns about lighting and concerns about signage and concerns about other issues, which we'll just, we'll go through each one and then um, we'll make sure that we're all on the same page as far as um, we may not be in agreement, but at least um, it's documented that we all um, either agree or disagree and then it's part of the minutes. So we'll start with moving forward with, um, let's go to the landscape because that was the one that we had some open-ended issues with. And I think um, James or Nick, and Tim, if you want to start back on this revised landscape plan, then that should we should be able to um, check off landscape if we're all in agreement and say that is done. Okay. Sure, uh, Michelle. This is James Tatro Thompson Liston, and uh, at the last meeting, I think the the last sort of uh, uh, <clears throat> um, point of contention or, or thing to be changed. Uh, that was the focus of discussion was that after seeing some improvement of the building and seeing some change of the proposed landscaping, uh, it was decided that the uh, proposed uh, picket fence in the front of the building facing Route 20 uh, should be, I should have said buildings, but facing Route 20 uh, should be eliminated as, as, it, no, as it was a bit regarded as a bit much of a residential 
uh, type of appearance and that its its necessity uh, did not seem to be there anymore with the, the other landscaping and with the improved building. Uh, so we submitted, uh, sent into Kathy a revised landscaping plan dated, I believe, 11-11-2020, uh, which removed uh, that uh, fence in the front of the bu the building buildings, excuse me, um, and that was, I believe, the uh, significant change in regard to the landscaping plan. Uh, there had been a couple changes made on the previous iteration, uh, which made the sign more visible in front, um, and I think which uh, he, there had also been submitted a. Uh, 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 picture showing the intended type of stockade fence bordering the abutter to the south, the, the Del Grecos. Um, and there was a little discussion of uh, the nature of uh, an appearance of that fence, that that was also a little bit more, uh, again, sort of residential style. But I think it was decided that because that fence, besides shielding uh, the Del Grecos from headlights, uh, it was also intended, it's going to be something that they're going to be looking at. I think the discussion was that it was probably reasonable in that case to have a fence with a bit more of a residential look because the Del Grecos are going to be facing it to the north, you know, from, from here on, even though there is some landscaping proposed on their their side of the fence, too. So um, I believe that, again, the primary change to the landscaping plan as reflected on the 11-11-20 plans uh, landscaping plan is the removal of that uh, previously proposed fence in the front. Okay, thank you, James. I appreciate it. Um, uh, Nick and Tim, did you have any other feedback on the landscape you wanted to present? No. Okay. Okay. So um, let's go around to the board members so we can make sure everybody is um, any feedback on the landscape. These are certainly what we had asked the applicant to consider. He certainly did. And James, when you, when you were explaining the landscape, you also explained um, the sign. So after we finish with landscape, let's go into signage and talk about the sign that's on, gonna be out on Route 20 as well. So, um, you know, I, I guess I'm looking at all of you. I could start with Tom and then Dave and then Lisa and then Diana, because that's the order I see you on my screen. I had one question. Should we not display this revised plan publicly that we're going to now vote on since it's a revised plan? Is that required? Uh, um, you, you mean just here at the meeting, Tom? Correct. OK. Um, we, James, do you have it up or, um, I mean, or can you put it up? I have it. Uh, yes, I can if you, if you, uh, we do the, the share. Uh, well, actually, Diana has it right there. She's a professional sharer. <laughs> That's what I do for a living. <laughs> can you see? Yeah. Uh, yep. That's the one, 11, 11, 20. Yeah. And as I say, the primary change, as you notice, uh, we're off the curb between uh, the, the 9,600 square foot building and uh, Route 20 before. You had about four to five feet off. You had that fence. Now you see uh, you don't see that fence there. Yep. Well, I, I think the, the improvements are are fine. I, I still have Dave Varon's concern about the planting around the building and in the parking lot and how well they will hold up over time. But as far as the buffer plantings on the perimeter and uh, single fence on the uh, south border, elimination along Route 20, I think those are acceptable. Thanks, Tom. Dave? Um, I feel the same way. Again, going around the building, I believe with the fire code, you got to be with stone around the building. So again, I have my same concern with the plants because they're going to be pretty hot, pretty fast. Um, but, you know, I think it's huge improvement and you know, it looks pretty good. So you recommending we put that notation in the, in the, um, in our, you know, letter to the ZBA that there should be stone around the building or? I think it's fire. That's fire code. I think it's only okay. if the building's combustible siding, Dave. Okay, so it's not required on this one. Correct. Okay, so. Um, but those plants on the south elevation. Yep. 
with a dark building behind it, they're going to be tough to maintain. Yeah, all of it. Because again, you got the asphalt, you got the concrete. It's, it's they front it's heat, heat sink. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so, so you, just to ask Tim yeah. or um, Nick and, and James, long term, after a year, if you were to find that this conditions would actually take place and you're losing most of your vegetation around the building. Um, what would you would you just remove it or do you think that you would just try and figure out um, another type of vegetation that would work because what usually happens is, is sometimes what happens is a project goes along and people look at landscaping and then the landscaping goes away because of basically the conditions that Dave and Tom were concerned about and then the vegetation never comes back and then we hear from the public well landscape never works right so what are you doing about landscape so i'm just trying to sort of look think ahead like if these conditions happened um you know would you just replace it with something else my question to dave is would grasses be better or what do they have there that you think is just going to not survive well i think better would be really removing all the plants you know like originally i don't want to really do the whole plan on here but um originally you know, I go to some of the other buildings that I've seen where they just literally run concrete straight up, get rid of the plants altogether and call it a day. Uh, you know, it's just, I think it's a cleaner look in that respect. They have enough landscape in the outer surroundings here. Um, you know, I, I like trees just as much as obviously it's my industry, but in a situation like this, I've never seen them do well unless it's irrigated. Okay. Bob, did you have some comments? Yeah, I just had a, just a quick reminder. Um, when um, a planting design or something like that um, becomes part of the um, order of conditions in a um, decision, um, all of those conditions in that, in that decision be becomes required in perpetuity. So, um, Case in point, I had an issue with the housing authority. They cut some trees that had overgrown and the neighbor complained and the housing authority wound up actually having to replant the trees because the trees were part of a um, uh, order of conditions in, in, the, in the decision. Um, so I would say if, if there's a little bit of a chance that these things may not survive due to design, you know, sun drowning, that sort of thing, um, I would word the decision to have a little bit of flexibility. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. So okay. um, we can just hear feedback from Diana and Lisa and then ask um, Nick and Tim, what do you think about that? Because this may be just a simple reoccurring problem as you heard from Dave and Tom that because of you know your asphalt and stuff that they just may not even survive the first year. <laughs> And then, you know, Bob's coming out to you saying we need to plant again and again. And, you know, we don't want to create unintended consequences where it's just not going to work. Right. But that's all I had. Okay. Lisa? So could, could I ask a question of yeah. Dave Aaron? Yeah. Dave, you see the south elevation of the, um, the, the larger building and they have five golden mops. Uh, mm -hmm. They have five looks like summer wine and they have two let's essay flamingo japanese willow are, are those heat and drought tolerant species it's condition such as that because there's there's not a lot of it's all impervious yeah it, with the paving in the building and it's facing south, so it's going to get, you know, eight to ten hours of sun. I don't know anything that's going to be that drought tolerant to really withstand anything such as that, short of like a, a beach grass. You know, even at that, I mean, that's just so much sun, so much heat. You know, I don't even know if that'll survive. Um, you know, because you're really talking asphalt on top of, you know, shining on metal and concrete. That, that's heavy duty. Michelle, if I can just chime in, um, I just looked up the regulation just before you get too far about whether you're gonna take this out or not. 
Um, in, in the um, uh, design uh, standard section of the zoning bylaw, and if anyone wants to look at it, you know, while you're sitting there, it's page 85, uh, 84 and 85, but it talks about at the top page 84, this is about um, landscape buffers, uh, shelf, uh, oops, wait, wait, I'm reading the wrong one. Um, wait, hang on one sec. <laughs> um, let's see, the, bo the bottom of 80, the bottom of page 85, top of page 86, and it talks about visual relief from buildings and hard materials shall be accomplished with landscape treatment such as shrub trees, flower boxes, and other greenery around the buildings or in recessed places. So there, there's a requirement, um, there, there's not a percentage, but there's a, you know, a requirement in the zoning bylaw that, that there be, um, you know, it's labeled visual relief. And basically to me that it's reading, you know, plants along the buildings or in front of the buildings. So I think before, before you might go down a path of, of eliminating everything here, um, you know, you, you may want to maybe make it as a suggestion to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, and they can grant, you know, a waiver <clears throat> or even it might need a variance, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, they may be able to grant some relief, you know, if, if everyone is so inclined that you don't want the shrubs around the buildings. But I think per the zoning bylaw, you need to have those. Yeah, I think, could you stipulate that in uh, extreme conditions like this, that the they use drought resistant and heat resistant plantings. It's in the bylaw that they have to be drought resistant. All right. It talks about drought resistant right in the same section, drought resistant plantings that may include, you know, trees, flowers, shrubs, succulents, ornamental grasses. Oh, there you go. You could do some cactus. Um, high water use turf shall not exceed 20% of all landscaped areas. Uh, so, I'm, I mean, I mean, I know there's no turf here, but. You just don't want, you don't want plantings that are perpetual maintenance issue. You know, they die, you plant, they die, you plant. I mean, that's. Yeah, I, to I completely understand that. I just, you know, I have to be the rule follower. Okay. Um, you... at, at least just point, point it out. So Dave, yeah. how do you feel about, um, Dave, you're on mute. Oh. Oops, Dave, what about the grasses? Yeah, yeah, I got an idea. Tim, do you know if that property, it's an old enough property, do you know if uh, they have an existing well on that property? They do. What about just using that and throwing in some drip irrigation around there? Can you salvage that well? Because that, that would solve your problems and you're done cheap. We, uh, we've, um, we need to look into it a little bit more. Um, but I, we, we have given that some thought. Um, we historically, I think, have a pretty good track record of hanging on to our um, plants. Um, you know, there's probably, you know, 10 examples of that uh, up and down Route 20. Um, you know, we actually have Garden Keep do uh, pruning and and other landscapers handle other aspects, and um, we we actually water because um, we think landscaping still matters. Um, you know, we we take pride in our properties. We use one thirty, um, Tim. Just as a side note, like in house, we use one thirty Main Street as an example to applicants. Or like, oh well, go, thank you. Well, take mm -hmm. a look at that landscaping. It's all year long it looks beautiful we 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 tried we try to uh keep it up I, ju I just think if you can use that uh well there and do a drip irrigation around that building and or the other one problem solved very inexpensively and you're done right the uh, existing well is in between the um old house office 
and the uh, block building. So it's more of a working with James and um, and checking the elevations to see what's what's achievable. Um, we we we're considering it. Yeah, because that that would be your easiest, I think, possibly your easiest way out, cheapest way out. Done. Okay, thank you, Lisa. One of the first questions I want to revisit. Um, <coughs> Are you taking the berm area down in front of the whole property? Because we talked Wait. about that before. So from the from the point of both properties, the 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 one that you own next door, the the um, office building, all the way down to the El Greco's um, house, is that front elevation going to be gone now, and it's just going to be flat to the street? No. Uh, uh, Lisa, the uh, the street is going to be three to uh, don't have the grades here on this plan, but the street is three to four feet lower um, than the edge of the property line from the curb line of Route 20 all along in front of this uh, until you get to the, the proposed driveway access from the curb line of Route 20 to the right of way line of Route 20. You're rising up three to four feet all along this. So a driver going by say a driver going south looks to his or her uh uh right as they're going by their eyes are going to be almost even with the ground at the the right of way limits and then the uh once you get further into the site you're a little bit higher than that the way this is essentially setting up grading wise is <clears throat> right now all of the from the curb line of route 20 up to the property line rises up at a one and a half to one, two to one slope. It, it varies. And we're going to flatten that out a little bit to a nice three to one slope that we, that can be maintained with grass and a, and a, and a lawn uh, easily. Um, but you're still going to have a rise of, again, that three to four feet before you reach the curb on, uh, uh, on the, uh, uh, the nearest curb in within the site to Route 20. So all of this, all of what you see, all of this landscaping is a few feet above Route 20. Um, and that's why uh, um, when we're looking at, especially at the, the different building uh, color and, and, and uh, texture, et cetera, uh, configurations, some of the, the options that we were looking at that had a lot of variation down low within the first couple feet, we were sort of, eh, you know, we're not, some of that's not going to be seen because a person, again, sitting in their car looking up, um, they're going to look up a few feet and they're going to see the, the vegetation, the, the shrubs, the landscaping uh, that's off the curb there. And they're actually going to have a hard time seeing, um, if they can at all, the first couple feet of, of uh, the 9,600 square foot building, you know, th that faces Route 20 and of the short side of the 7,000 square foot. So it, I probably went on too long, but the, the real answer is is that the the site is all a few uh, four feet or so above Route 20. And how much how much is it right now? What's the actual height? Do you know about? Oh no, it's 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 variations of that within it within because we're we're changing the grade a little bit to have the the, the you know. Uh, a, a reasonable parking lot uh, grade, but right now it is the same. Um, for instance, uh, if you look where the, the existing oak tree is proposed, um, just a you know 50 feet from the proposed driveway, that exi that existing oak oak tree to remain. The reason it can remain is because the grades aren't essentially changing there, and they don't change too much um, along along all of the frontage. We're just cutting it down a little bit to make a, a long-term maintainable uh, surface alongside the, the Route 20 curb and, and you have some varying cuts and, and fills within the site once you get further in the site. So James, is, is the roadway is about 360 on the north border to around 362 when you get towards the entry. I 
that sounds right. I don't have it right in front of me. I'm, I'm just looking at right. the whole at the screen. But the, real, the, real, the only place where you see these buildings is where the entry is once the buffer is planted. I think that's correct, Tom, with respect to especially the, the lower part of the building. Right. So you'll see the upper 15 feet of the buildings. Correct. All right. One of the reasons why I asked the question is when you do drive down that whole area, that all those, all those land areas have that pretty high burn. So it's just kind of a, you don't yep. notice it because it's all equal as you're driving by. And my concern was that you're going to take it down and then put trees and, and vegetation up, which, in my experience, does start to die and show through. And so um, it's nicer to leave the existing berm, add to that, you know, your plants, but at least you know that there's going to be a certain amount of uh, uh, shielding from the visual when it is like that. So I like to say, Trees and, and everything else don't don't last forever. I know this is going to be put in perpetuity, but it needs uh, it needs to be blending with the other lots. I would think instead of really cutting it out and making it look like it's its own uh, its own industrial piece. Is a fill with the existing driveway is. Say again. We're filling where the existing driveway is into Del Greco's. So you'd bring that up in the same level as the rest of the berm. James would have to uh, talk on that. Yeah, but yes. If we went to the uh, the site plans um, as as the, uh, the the screen and, and to specifically the grading plan, we could um, see if I can find it. Oops. Yeah, we could discuss exactly what the the different grades are. Uh, honestly, Lisa, the the real intention here is just to was just to. Uh, change that slope off the Route 20 curb from uh, a slope that was going to be hard to to keep mowing and maintaining well to a a three to one that we could, but the grades once you get into the site aren't very different. So we're not the the other thing is that right now if you drive along there, um, the slope off the curb is much more pronounced. Uh, the, a few lots to the south. In front of the in front of the Del Greco lot to the to the immediately to the south and the next lots south from that. If you drive along and you right now and we're looking into the site, um, you'll you can see in right now, it's not, you know, it's not so such a a big slope as in front of the properties to the south. I'm not sure I'm finding it. I have the one where you added the dumpsters. Um, if I could uh, share, I could show. Okay. I, I stopped sharing. So James, I think you just have to use your share button. I don't think we have to do anything on our end. Okay, let's try this. Okay. Oh, can you see that? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, so let's, I don't know if you can see where I've got the, the cross, the, the, uh, the cursor in effect. You can see I'm, I'm looking sort of at the right side. I'm in front of the right side of the, the larger building. The existing grade in the road is 360 even. Um, if I go into the site, I moved a little close, about halfway to the right side of the bigger building. And the existing grade there was 368. We're dropping that to 366, and you had about 367 right where I've got the crosshairs now. We're dropping that to 366, um, and you'd be about 366 and change, where it's about eh, probably about 367 and change. So there's about a foot difference, uh, for instance, in this area. 360 in the road to what was probably 367 and it's going to be 366 and change. Um, so that's, and that's fairly typical. Let's find another one over here. You were uh, just short of 362 and you were going up to 368 and there's 368 proposed now. I think this is somewhere near where the, uh, 
uh, existing oak tree to remain is, and that's, again, because we're not really changing the grade there, so we shouldn't be disrupting the roots. Um, and go another one down here. You were at 358, towards the north end, you were at 358. Going up to 360, this is only 362, this is four feet higher. We're actually going to make this six feet higher right here. So here we're, we, we're raising it about two feet higher just off the curb. Here we're fraction of a foot to a foot lower than it was. Here we're pretty much even. 368, yeah, here's the uh, a, a benchmark notation on that oak. 368 versus 368, and the, the benchmark's a couple of feet up. So I think that's, uh, you know, you can see, so we're slight, slightly raising, slightly cutting, about even. So it's, uh, you know, on the whole, it's pretty close to the same grades by the time you get to the curb as there were before. But our focus here was to make this area here um, off, off our curb and off the Route 20 curb, excuse me, um, something that could be maintained long term. Because right now, some of this is too steep. Like right where I've got the uh, car tour right now, this is like a one and a half to one, two to one slope, and it's that's that's a tough mow. <laughs> so couldn't you, couldn't um, you put creeping juniper in there so you don't have to mow all of it? Um, possibly, but just, this is also you're going to get all the throw of snow from Route 20. Um, so we, it would be tough to, it'd be tough to plant within six feet or so of much within of, of that curb and, and expect it not to get maybe overwhelmed by the, you know, the, the plows rolling along, uh, route 20. Mm -hmm. So at that point we were just looking to do grass through that, that whole section. All right. Cause I mean, the top of the hill, will grow their way down as opposed to being killed from their roots. I mean, it's a suggestion. Mm -hmm. It's not the only thing, but something that's doing. And then, um, and then the next question then is because we are taking, we're taking away the fencing that was there. Are the um, are the the dumpsters certainly the one that's to the east of the second building? Uh, going to be, well, I think the dumpsters are supposed to be enclosed in fencing, aren't they? They are, and that's that's. I'm going, to, I'm going to zero in just a little bit further. Um, these are all the, for instance, right where I've got the, the cursor, you've got the two dumpsters, and what's shown around them is this is fencing, and this is a uh, gate, obviously, at the, at the uh, access end of them. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so they, they are all shown as, um, again, having fencing around them, uh, gates in front at the access end. Great. Great, I'm glad. All right, yeah. thank you. So then the, um, then the next question I have, and it, I don't know if it's part of the landscaping, the area between the two dumpsters to the north, or yeah, to the north, that area right in there that's, that I think you had as a recharge area or something, there was something underneath that? Yep, yep what, that's infiltration. Okay, what will happen because the side facing building, um, when they go to do their outside storage, as you said, they'll, they'll have the ability to store materials outside. So how will that be shielded from the road when the building is um, on this side and not straight in front or at a perpendicular and not a parallel? Well, uh, for one thing, this was the area where it was a little more elevation difference um, again, you've got the tree and shrub plantings here. Um, if it, I, I guess I'm hoping that would be sufficient. If, if more is needed, we could, could certainly discuss. Um, at what, at what point though, is it after the fact or we discuss it now? Is it after the building's been built and we see what's happening? I don't think you can go back and do anything about that, right? Well, would you would you want to have some fence returned in this put back in this area where I'm? Well, this, I would, this is what would. Yeah, I think I think it, at the very least, uh, more of a stockade, not not a residential looking, but a stockade so that you can't see that sort of thing because I've seen them 
at different warehouses and they just start stacking things up because you know that's how the nature of the business is. But because you don't have that building hiding it anymore, you have to consider that area. Okay. Um, um, you, the only thing the third time talking about this plan and now all of a sudden it's an issue. So the only thing I would say is if we look probably just two or three parcels down the road, you have Ace Hardware that uses a ton of their side of their building um, for materials that are, are outside anywhere from landscaping to soil to propane to, you know, um, you know, again, we don't really know who his applicants are going to be, but you do have like a certain higher level elevation, you've got a dumpster, you've got parking spaces. I guess, are you concerned about in the area that's all the way further away towards the back between the two dumpsters that somewhere back there, someone might put some wood and you're gonna see it and that would be a problem? No, I don't think it, I don't think you could be as specific as knowing where they're gonna put it. If you have four clients that are in the smaller building, each one of them can have whatever product they're going to need to put outside, whether they, in the case of uh, Moe's, he, he stacks his tires out there. Um, in, in landscaping, they may stack, stack you know, blocks of uh, stones that are in pallets. There's things that go out there. Ace isn't a very good example because Ace is, is set back and that's part of their product is selling those, those items. It's not storage, they're selling the plants and everything. So when you get into a, again, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're shoehorning an industrial use in a residential commercial area. And it has to look more residential commercial in my estimation. So, the, so that's what my concerns are is that once this is put in and, and two or three or four years later, it's not gonna look as pretty as it does right now. Um, I know myself with my bank experience next door, those trees are almost all dead. And I see the lights coming into my window at night just from their sign. And there's nothing there that's gonna make them go back and fix that. So here we have this on Route 20, well, Southwest Cutoff. And, and it's right there, it's, it's, you know, it's a totally different look for the area. So that's my concern. I don't like the fact it's at this last minute either. I apologize for that, but I really, you know, these are my thoughts and I wanted the, the chance to express them. Okay, so Lisa, do you have anything else before we move forward on landscaping? Because much to Nick, like if we keep on coming back and changing and changing, they'll never move forward. So let's try to be, is there anything else? So you're all set on the berm, right? You're happy with the berm. You understand that there'll be a berm there. Yes. You got to come back off of, you have to unmute yourself. I'm muted, am I? Okay. So on the berm, because you did in the email you sent to me, you had questions about the berm. You're all set and understand there will be a berm there. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, and so I don't know how the other board members feel, but is this, and I could, what, I could ask staff about this as well. Since we don't, the applicant does not really know who his clients are yet and what they will be doing. Is this something where we could make a recommendation to the ZBA that, if complaints are, if they do, if for some reason they get applicants and they are storing things and they're visible from the street and it becomes an eyesore, could that add, uh, either reconvene with the design review committee to make a request for a fence or at that time request that the um, applicant consider a fence? I mean, because right now, Nick and, and, and Tim and, and James, you, you don't really know who your applicants are. You don't know whether this is ever going to happen. Why put up a big fence when you don't know if there's anything beyond it? However, if it does happen and people drive by and go, oh my gosh, what are all these X things doing there? Then you can make a decision at that time or staff can. Is that doable so that we can take that issue and move it along? I think it's gonna be hard to uh, define what an eyesore is. Um, I mean, obviously we don't want that to look like a junkyard, but I also don't think this applicant has a record of sites that have that problem. Um, I also think that the further back in the site you get, the, the less people are gonna see from the road. I mean, I feel like the applicant has done what we've asked them to do on both landscaping and site through these many reviews. And that to me, I don't find that being um, an area of concern. 
And I think it's going to be very, you know, hard to define at CBA exactly what is and isn't tolerated within that. Yeah, and in my opinion, I'd rather not see a six or eight foot stock wood stock fence with beautiful landscaping when it doesn't make sense. And it takes away from the landscaping that we already invested in. Um, Tom and Dave, do you have feedback on this request? And then we can hear from staff. Well, you know, the contractor yard definition does allow storage distribution or sale at wholesale or retail level. So that's a pretty broad use category. But if you look at the site plan, um, you're not going to be storing materials in the parking areas. So the, really the only place you could do it is around the perimeter on the north and the west edges, I would think. But, you know, again, we don't know who, who's going to use this. But if you adhere to the definition in the bylaw, you can have storage and sale of products on site. So it's a little mixture of um, retail in here. Potential. Dave? Uh, <clears throat> um, I don't have the breakdown of the plants because I'm in my office office, not my home office, and I moved everything over there for this plan. But when it comes to the plants that are on the right-hand side, I believe those are two existing trees um, that are on the plan. Is that correct? Um, That's correct. And if we try to put anything larger in there for evergreens, you're going to be competition and it's not going to work. And I remember from what was in there, it's a good mix right now. And, and I think it should be left alone. And I think if you start putting a stockade fence into that, you got too much going on there. And, you know, something's going to give in one way or another. And I, I think... I see everybody's point, but at the same time, I think the way it is right now is is probably the best solution. Uh, otherwise, you can get into in a couple of years addition to a subtraction where you have too much going on in such a small space, something has to give. Is it the oak trees, the evergreen, or is it the fence? Because something is going to have to give because you have too much in a small space. And I would uh, uh the oak trees to go. Michelle, I would I would just uh, further uh, add on to uh, to Tom's point that um, just the nature of first of all, if what I guess would be seem most objectionable would be materials that are uh, uh, you know obviously easily visible from the street if they were you know something with an objectionable appearance, but this aisle here has to be maintained open for vehicle passage. The area here has to be maintained for access to the dumpsters. Um, you've got to allow access in here for the the uh, overhead door to this unit. So it's actually pretty hard to store anything in this area. Um, you, know, you get and once you get further over here, you're a little more distant from the road, and you're actually a little tougher to see because again, you're down here to to jump back. You're down here at around 358, and this is 364 base, and again, probably some 150 feet away. Right. Um, so the visibility will be somewhat limited, and just as, as Tom is suggesting, just the nature uh, of maintaining access to some of these points would prevent you from storing materials in the area that's most visible. Um, the area where it's more easy to, to store some some materials maybe is back here, but that's actually going to be shielded from view by the larger building. James, can I ask you a question about storage of uh, equipment and vehicles? Uh, sure, sure. there may be a question for Nick and, and Tim, but yep. Uh, you wouldn't want them parking large pieces of equipment on your retention area or your septic system. Correct? That's correct. So those areas, we're not going to see lots of, you know, earth movers and backhoes and stuff like that, that you could see from the road. Um, well, I, right. I, I would have, I actually would have to backtrack a little bit. We wouldn't want it to be over the septic system specifically, but the chambers in the ground at the infiltration system can stand up to uh, some, some, you know, heavy loading. 
So but then they built, they'd be off paved surfaces. Then they'd yes, be into it, the, so you're going to start destroying your landscaping by putting vehicles off the paved area. Well, if we imagine a vehicle here parked on on the on the lawn for whatever reason, he's also shielded from view in part by the uh, landscaping and the uh, just the fencing around the uh, dumpsters too. Yeah, it's tough to stockpile materials that are going to be in a a right of way or a fire lane. So. I'm not so concerned about that. I think the nature of these contractors are going to be indoor storage of their vehicles and their materials. I don't know if that's consistent with Tim and Nick's view of it. Uh, that's what other, other tenants um, in other locations seem to store most things inside. It's just I, I the nature the of, lens itself of how it goes. Yeah, I don't think the site lends itself to outdoor material storage on a long-term basis or even vehicle storage because it's just, you don't have the areas. Right. Okay. Lisa, do you have any other input or any concerns about the landscape before we move on to Diana? No, nothing. Okay. And Diana? So as I said, I think that... Um, they've responded to our comments and I don't have concerns about, um, you know, outside storage, particularly because we've pointed out that much of the site would not be uh, suitable for that just based on parking, traffic, discharge, all of that. Um, okay. So thank you. I, I do want to let you know, Kathy, that I have a hard stop at 930. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Same thing on the 930 hard stop. I got an office. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so to move it along, uh, we did ask the applicant to go through the landscape plan, which is presented to all the changes that we requested. Um, we just had a good discussion about it and thought through the process. And so um, before we end the meeting, um, we will go through um, signage. Um, if you could just talk one time just to make sure, because Lisa had some concerns about signage and concern about the lighting plan. Let's just quickly go to the lighting plan. Could you just briefly, James or Nick, talk about the lighting plan? Because um, when the sure. planning board met this week, we hadn't seen a lighting plan, but you're going to present the lighting plan to the ZBA because when you had met with us way back, you didn't have a lighting plan. So I know you'll be presenting that as part of your package to ZBA. If you could just I, show right now to um, Lisa, who had some concerns about the lighting plan, and then um, for the sake of time, sure. You know, we'll try to keep I'll, that to a minimum of two to three minutes so that we can be productive in our last few minutes. I'll be very quick. Um, what you have on the screen here is the photometric plan, which showed the results of the wall pack lights on the building and four lights. And I'll just jump back to the landscaping plan. We wanted uh, four lights, one here by the entrance, one here at the back uh, of the of the pavement, one here, sort of lighting the area between the, the two buildings, and another one here at the back uh, uh, corner. Uh, in addition to that, you'd have a wall pack light uh, by each door back and wall, wall pack light by each door front. And that's the proposed lighting. And the photometric plan, which I, I won't go back to, but it unfortunately is a little hard to look at, um, you know, show that there wasn't going to be um, excessive uh, spillover to adjacent properties. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lisa, do you have any questions about this? Well, I see the spots where they are. What's the, I mean, I don't know if maybe there's a plan I haven't seen. How does it, how does it fan out? How high are they? And, and what's the, what's the one, what's the lights that they're using to put there? I hope I get this right. I believe they were 14 foot, and I don't have the uh, the wattage. It was on the, the the lighting plan that was included in the site plans. Um, okay. Here it is. The uh, no, it's just that's uh, oh, excuse me, uh, 20 foot on on the uh, 20 foot. they were 20 foot down facing on the uh, the four poles. Yeah, sorry. All right. Well, if they're going to do it at ZBA, you know, they can finish with it. Or, I mean, I 
I didn't see how the, the spread would go or how high they were, or what they looked like. So I thought I'd, I'd like to have seen that in the plans, but perhaps I missed what they, what they looked like. Do we know that the uh, the uh, poles are 20 foot and the wall mounted ones are what did you say 12 foot when I looked back at the other one and everyone's required to do. Um, uh, when you go back to that yeah so you can see yep. right here the mounting heights for the site lights are 20 feet the wall packs are 12 feet and everyone does this illumination plan, which is standard in the industry and it's showing that nothing spills over off the property. And so the light levels are. You know, we're talking one foot candles at the pavement. That's, yeah. it's not a lot of light here. Mm. Yeah. All right, that's fine. We just, I just wanted to get more information. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And two then um, 2.5 foot candles. Um, that's less light than you have at your front door. I, I can resend all this information. I mean, you, you all have it. Yeah. Um, and you and you have the cut sheets for what the lights were going to look like. Um, so I can just resend that email. I mean, it doesn't, you know, help you right now. But I thought you'd put the lights to bed a couple of meetings ago. But yeah. Michelle, you've only got five more minutes with. Yeah. Um, with okay. And Diane. So um, just to go through our checklist, because really today's meeting was to review all the landscape changes, and we did have a long discussion about that. Um, so the, the board has gone through and we reviewed the signage and um, unless you, you know, we're going to go through it again, unless you have um, any, um, you know, reason that you're not going to vote no. We've already checked off signage. We've already checked off site. We've already checked off landscaping um, and, and, and then the lighting plan. And it did make is, changes architecturally that we had requested as well. I'm sorry, say that again. It did make some changes architecturally that had been recommended. So we should okay. go with that. Yep. And I think they're, they've done what we've requested in particular with the smaller building. And then Tom. Here's the smaller building, the uh, elevations. Well, I think by putting all f four elevations for each building, you can see that there's now a vocabulary that's consistent throughout for both buildings. And so whether you're driving by or you're going up onto the site, it now looks all of a piece. And it's got a similar treatment on all elevations. So I'm certainly in favor of uh, these revisions. I agree. OK. So we are now at 925. So um, Kathy, what's the next step? We'll have the um, design review. Do we have to take a formal vote on this and then vote on it and then send it off or? Yep, that's, that's typically what you've done in the past is, um, is you've taken a vote and um, in sometimes when the applicant has, has met all of your comments, which I believe this applicant has, um, you basically just say that you you know, you've worked with the applicant and, um, you know, the elevations dated such and such and the lands, you know, the site plan dated such and such that you're, you know, in approval of. Um, if you still have comments that you don't think that they've incorporated, um, you know, then you, you ask that the ZBA put those in as conditions. But I, in going through my notes, um, as I've been sitting here, the, everything that I had as a question for the board members to follow up on it has been followed up on. Could, unless, could I request a... I mean, today, the purpose of today's meeting was to go over the elevations. Um, and, could and they stipulate what kind of fencing is around the dumpsters? We um, had a, 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 the uh, uh, box weave uh, uh, fence proposed, which is from any distance is a is, is in solid opaque uh, surface. Is it a chain link, James, with slats? No. Okay. It's it. Yeah. Stockade. Not just chain link. It's the. Uh, gosh, I'm forgetting the term. The 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 slats uh, weaved uh, uh, version. Chain link. Could you could you note that on your plan? Yeah, it, it actually is noted on the details. Um, okay. All right. Let me just jump. Thank you. 
Okay. So um, we reviewed everything. We'll go around and take a vote. Um, and then when I call out your name, um, so that the applicant, like we said, has submitted their plans, um, answered our shadow everybody. box. There we go. Okay. Shadow box. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And that's on the plan. Um, the applicant has met with us several times. We've worked through the process and um, answered and, and addressed all of our requests and concerns that were made um, by the board. And um, so now we'll just take a vote. So I'll go through, um, Dave, are you in favor of um, the design review plans that were submitted to us for this 50 um, Southwest cutoff? Yes. Okay. Tom? Approve. Okay. Lisa? Nope. I'm not going to approve. Okay. And Diana? Approved. Okay. And myself approved. Okay. So is Kathy, is there anything else you need from us? Uh, nope. Nope. Okay. I'm, I'm all set. I'll, um, I'll just put together um, a quick memo. Um, the, you know, that just, again, that simply a couple of sentence, sentences that the applicant has addressed all of the concerns and that four out of um, five members um, approved the plan. Okay, thank you. Okay, Kathy, do you, because it we're coming up to 930 and this was scheduled to be an hour meeting, have you, do you have anything else for design review to um, talk about or? No, 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 I'll send out, um, uh, when I get some, I asked Judy for dates, of course, but um, when I get some dates from her, I'll send those out to everybody and, and we can just either do a doodle poll or, or, you know, I'll just do it through email. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Uh, Tim uh, yes. and Nick and James, you're all set with design review. And so your next step is with the ZBA. So um, thank you for your time, them. everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for taking the time and working with us. I know it was several meetings, but um, you addressed all our concerns and we do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Take care. Thank you. Yep. Take care. And then uh, for everyone else, have a nice Thanksgiving and we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good day, everyone.